work, so I just started going to try making a video. I just figured out that I can uh, make videos with KDN Live using my uh, laptop and the phone. And so I can make videos, and that uh, turned out pretty decent. So I'm going to try to make one today. And I, I think I'm just going to demonstrate, you know, show you the KD Ubuntu, you know, my operating system, Linux, introduced Linux. I uh, really like, I got a really cool setup here, and I like it. And uh, here's my little works for I got four desktops I can use. And um, here's my, you know, my all my applications are right here. I've got, you know, I had to, I set this up the way this looks like uh, here. I had to do a lot of editing. One of your most, when you first, the first thing I do when I install Linux is I right click on this panel and edit panel. And then you, when you edit panel, you can adjust the height and I squeeze it down a little bit. So, because I don't like that big fat, you know, thing. And then you get rid of it there. And so I guess that's not going to come back up, but that's okay. It's running in the background down there. So if, let's go over in here. You know, uh, my, my, I use the center is my web browser and it, been I've been using it ever since uh, Firefox announced that they were going to start censoring their you know search engine I, I switched over to the to, to center and I've been using it ever since and it works just fine yeah, so I don't need to read anything in there but anyway so I use that and uh, right here is your if you right click on this you can you know, select the format that you want to use. I like the really old, old-fashioned one, which is basically this, where you got a list. You see the whole entire list over here, you know, because the, the, the kind of medium old one, you don't see the whole list. You, you see a list, but it, you have to scroll on it, and I don't like that. And with the, uh, sometimes you have to scroll on this one. If you have more applications than there are between the top and bottom of the screen, you'd have to scroll, but usually you don't. And the new one is kind of using the GNOME style where you, it's totally different. It's not even down here like this. It uses the whole screen, and which I don't mind it using. I just don't like it as much. You also have to scroll on that one, you know, because you get some of your on you'll have like two or three pages of applications whereas with this I just I can see all the applications in one thing and that's why I like that now the next thing you do is you go here's your system settings is going to be your main the way you set this up and uh, global themes plasma style you know, you go into your global theme and you can, you know, I have a whole bunch of ones. I experiment on this a lot. I do a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of time setting all these programs up. And I go in here and I edit them, you know, because you can edit them. You know, get new global themes and everything like that. You go to the plasma style and you can pick which one of these you like. You know, spec. You know, the, most of these are ones that I installed, and I finally got a setup that I really like. You know, I don't really do that much with these two, but I I I do select pick a global theme. I don't really do a lot with that one either, but the one I really do a lot with is colors. Because I got all, you know, you get all these in here. And then you take one of them and you can edit it. You know, create, create the neutral or something. Is, it, is that the one I'm using? What am I using now? 
I'm not sure which one I'm leaving, but uh, whatever, whichever one. And you know, and I get in there and you edit them, and you have to make a separate. You know, you you don't want to edit the original. You make a copy of it, and then you edit that you know version. And you can just you can edit each color. You know, like say let's say you can go in here and edit this one, and you can here's your colors over here. You can change all these colors. You know, everything. And um, the next thing is your file, and you can do anything with that or any of that. Workspace behavior, I don't do a lot in here. I don't think click, I, I always switch this to single click to open files and folders because I, I don't like why do something twice, you know, to do something. I don't really ask, you know, you can set up your desktop effects any way you want to. I typically don't do anything with any of this. Virtual desktop, I can. So the, the main thing I do in this section, workspace behaviors, I switch single click to open files and folders. Okay, and then I go back to this. Window management, I think there's some stuff in here. Raise. I know that I, I set it up to where, let's say if I open Kate Editor, I set this up, I can't remember where I set this, but if I click on this, see how that pops back, you know. Oh, yeah, see, yeah, so, and uh, little things like that. I go over here, this is an interest. I, I put the fur, for the latte window colors, force the blur. That's how I get this kind of blur, you know. And um, somewhere in here, I thought. Shortcuts, you know, you want to, I do a lot of work in here. I set up my shortcuts, you know, select, I don't even have Thunderbird on here anymore because, because that's, Thunderbird is, uh, they're made by Firefox, so I got rid of all that, you know, because I don't want anything to do with that company. If they're going to be searching, if they're going to be, you know, artificially, changing, you know, what do you call that, uh, censoring the search of their product, then I'll just get a different one. So workspace, startup, startup is shut down, is you, you can set your, you know, this is my start page when I start up and I log in, which is really cool, you know, this is like I said, when I, when I did all this coloring, I would like start, I'd find these YouTube videos and I would, uh, start putting them in and they were so long and they were you know i got about halfway through and i finally gave up on it man but i ended up with a kind of a good mixture of several different programs that came up with you know like this i think this came from the edna pro you know thing but i'm not sure about that and you know you can change uh, uh start the sp splash screen is another one I like to, you know, I go find some decent pictures. This is the one I got on here now. And cast your diary. I don't really do anything with that one. I, uh, I don't really do anything with this. I, I don't do a lot of searching on my computer. I mean, you know, I should probably start using that tool a little bit more. Applications, you can, you set your default applications right here, and that's pretty easy to do. You know, sometimes you might have to put down the path to the, uh, 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 you know, Kitty is my text, my uh, my uh, my terminal that I use. It runs in the GPU, and so there's not really a whole bunch I do in there.
but let me reset my default applications. I don't really do anything in there. Connections, settings. I don't really do anything in here. Hardware. Input devices, I think. NumLock. I turn that on. And um, layouts, advanced. Caps lock behavior. On this one, this is really important. I go down, you configure keyboard options. You know, I, I go to here, keyboard, input devices, keyboard, advanced. And then configure keyboard options. And I go down here and click on this, cap lock behavior. And then go down to the very bottom of that list and cl click swap escape and caps lock. And this is like one of the most important things that, it, it, that I do when I set up my Linux. And that turns your, your caps lock key into your escape key, which makes it, it a lot easier to get to because, and you use that a lot, especially in Vim, where you just escape out of things and just go back to it. And then your escape key is your caps lock key. And so that's a really important tool that I use. Uh, another one I let's just check the other things. Pointer speed, you can adjust that. That's something I might adapt. You know, sometimes I adjust that, but I like the way it's working at this point. Game control, navigating the touchpad. Touchpad, I set this the scrolling from two fingers to touchpad edges. So one, with one, I, I don't have to use two fingers to scroll. I just use the one finger on the edge or the bottom of the, the touchpad. That's kind of a little setting I do. I don't really do much with that. Multimedia, what do I do here? Nothing. I mean, you can set these settings, you know, they're definitely there. Here's one that I do. This is one of the very first things I do. I put click on the, you know, because usually this is set to like, it, you know, it, it basically turns your screen off after 15 seconds or whatever. And so I reset this to, I usually set it to, it's going to dim the screen after 15 minutes, and then I'll switch off the screen after 60 minutes. And, you know, that just, that way the thing isn't just, turning off all the time. Cancel. I don't want that one. All settings. I don't want to change here. Why is it changed? What changed? I didn't really intend on changing anything. Okay, so KDE Connect. Thunderbolt. So there's a bunch of different information in here. I didn't really want to change anything, so I'm not going to change anything. So this is telling me my, you know, I got KDE Plasma version, Frameworks version, Toot version, Kernel version 5.8, Operating System type 64-bit, 8 processors, you know, it's, it's a decent computer. It's got a broken hinge. So, uh, I'm, you know, it's not working. It's it's on its last leg. You know, it's got a broken hinge. And so, but it's, you know, the, it's beautiful. You know, if I can figure, I, I may try to fix that. What I'm kind of planning on doing is getting a new KUbuntu Focus laptop. But that's uh, expensive and... So it may take me a while to get it. So, you know, I, I don't know if I'll try to get this one fixed. You know, and trying to get your workflow set up for Linux and, you know, you got to get your your setup. And uh, it's fun. I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time just configuring Linux. And I want to try to get away from that. I, I have a pretty good setup. I know how to set it up. You know, another thing is, uh, you know, using, uh, you know, if you go, like, say, I go 
control and then say two and that switches me over to the second desktop and so I can open those say Windows K is going to open my this. I could go Tmux. I can't really remember the commands on Tmux though. So like uh, you do, I think because I changed all this and let's see. Uh, Anyway, let's just close all that. And, you know, I, I had this set up to where, you know, you can use Tmux and that way you could divide this up into different pages to see different things. But I, it's been so long since I did anything with it. I can't really remember how, what it was. So I would just go control C to get out of that and then exit to get out of that. No, what? Exit. So that's the terminal. It, usually I go to the fourth page and I open, I just put my, you know, Windows and then F E is gonna open my Crusader file manager and my Kate text editor. I Kate is one of my favorite Linux tools. I use it all the time to write stuff in and that's what I use. I uh I used to use Dolphin all the time, but I found this Crusader, which is just a fancy version of Dolphin. And, you know, it's got all these buttons and stuff on it, readme, you know, different things you can do. And I don't really use them. I don't know what they do. And, you know, at some point I'll get into this more and learn more about this. You know, here's your help thing. Let's see, you know, Crusader. So, Okay, so it comes up like this, and you can look it up. So there's the handbook, and you can go through here and read all your, you know, read all about it and learn how to use Crusader. I haven't done that yet, but it's it's there, and you can do it. And, you know, and there's each one of these has a whole bunch of different things you can do, um, You know, KDE, it's KDE. This is what KDE looks like, it's beautiful. And like I said, I did a lot of work to get this to look like this. This is not what KDE looks like right out of the box. You have to kind of do some more things. So let's go to, if I go to three, you know, it's like, what is it? Yeah, function three key switches me in, so that gets me to where I got my simple screen recorder button. There's two, there's one. Usually I have my browser open in the number one. Right here we're using this system administrator, so we don't, so we got that done. And Another thing that I do all the time is uh, I go in here, settings, configure Crusader, and I can go in here and I uh, update default settings, panel. It's just, you know, I spend hours and hours setting all these settings each time. You know, you can set your colors in here. I don't really set colors in here. What do I do? Advanced. There's one of them in here that sets your, it sets startup. She also put a save last, which is update default, save default. It, it sets it with this split screen automatically. There's a way to do that in here. And, uh, you know, and like I said, I didn't really, it's been a while since I set all this up. And so, And you can find it, you know, you just look around in here and you'll find it. The main thing I do is I set this. This is where I would set that. Where Change color screen, last position, update. It should be like right here, save. 
But anyway, so I set this up in here. To where it automatically opens with that on there with this split screen because it's not split you know automatically you know when you first install it i really like this split screen system because you can just you can grab a, a file from this side and move it over to another folder on this side you know you can click on that to get back to the home screen I typically keep my, you know, you can go for view, view, show hidden files. I usually keep that on because I, I edit my, my hidden files fairly often. And so, you know, that, you know, that's what you do. You just get in here and find your way around, look for it. And, uh, look for things and just explore this read the help, help directories read the manuals LibreOffice is another tool i use a lot you know for i don't really use this any much anymore because I, I i write my stories in kate and uh you know but this is the program. See, now this one here, I got a problem with this one because it's got white deals on a, on a white background, a light gray background. So that's not very good, but you can fix that. I mean, sometimes this is really hard too, man, to get this, I don't know, it's harder to do LibreOffice. It's hard to get LibreOffice to match your your theme, the color scheme for your computer. And, uh, but anyway, so you know, that was just a basic introduction to KDE Linux, KUbuntu, open your file manager, and then you can press control. What is it? Control Q? Yeah, control Q. You know, and there's a whole bunch of shortcuts, you know. My big main programs are Vim and, uh, you know, I use ZCL and Vim and you edit your, your dot files, your configuration files and make it so that uh, it, uh, you know, looks the way you want it and acts the way you want it. And, you know, there's a, it takes a long time. I spend hours and hours configuring my Linux. Now, and I kind of like to get, I'm kind of at the stage now where I'm actually using Linux to do other things other than just configuring Linux, like I'm creating these videos. I got a website. It's not like I want it where I have a local development environment where I'm editing the, the website in my computer and then uploading the changes to the to the live website, which is kind of what I want to do. But right now it's just a WordPress website on Bluehost and it's working okay. I mean, it looks decent and, you know, so I'm making progress. Now I'm, my main thing I'm learning now is K, KDN Live. I'm using, I first started using, uh, just making videos, you know, with the phone, making videos and uploading them on YouTube. And now, I figured out how to I could use KDN Live to record the screen on my laptop and along with the video on the phone. And I and then I can put the two together into a tutorial. So I'm gonna see how that goes. And if I start making a whole bunch of them, I'll learn how to do it. I'll get really better and better at it, you know, and there'll be I won't be like fumbling around trying to figure out what I'm doing, you know, with just you know, that's just how you learn how to, that's how you use Linux. You learn, use your browser to search the web and find out what is going on and things like that. You know, answer, find, figure out how to do things. You can find the answer on the web, on some, somewhere on the internet. Use your help directories. Every one of these applications has a help directory. Use that. There's also the man, you type in on your, your terminal, you type man, and then 
whatever application you want to read about and there's good information in there and then the main source of information is DuckDuckGo. I use DuckDuckGo. I don't use Google because I, I don't want any corporation controlling me or you know spying on me and selling my private information to anybody. You know, I mean, I don't have anything to hide. I, I'm just my, I'm just one person, just having fun flying around, you know. And uh, anyway, have fun, make the world a better place, and uh, you know, learn how to use Linux. Get free, you know, set yourself free from the corporate, you know, military-industrial complex. You know, I call it the imperial pyramid, where it's a social hierarchy that. Control, you know, a few fortunate people, they get an advantage and then they use that advantage to increase their advantage and it, it just keeps, now we have people with hundreds of billions of dollars and along with a whole bunch of people that are living on the streets, they're homeless people. And that's, that's not a, acceptable, that's not just or fair or anything, that's just corrupt is what it is and so and I believe that Linux and free and open source software is a big part it's not the only part and I'm not necessarily saying corporations in and of themselves are not bad you know it's the people running the corporations and what they're doing with them that is making it you know it's like an oppressive totalitarian state I mean you don't need a you know, uh, bullies, you know, whether they're business people or government people or religious leaders, any, any bullies, bullies is what's wrong. And, uh, and so we need to fix that and work on fixing that. And there's a solution. We're working on that and teaching people to be, to respect each other, love and respect everybody. You know, nobody's more or less important than anybody else. So my videos are getting a lot longer, and you know now they're now I'm up to thirty, you know I'm up to twenty eight minutes. So I'm I kind of like the fifteen minute videos because it's a nice easy you know you can watch a fifteen minute video real quick, but I I also watch a lot of like fifty minute you know I I watch a lot of videos that are just under an hour, or just you know right around an hour. Sometimes they're a little over an hour or a little under an hour, but I watch those a lot. And because uh, they're, I learned, that's how I learned this, is by watching videos, reading books. I read a lot of manuals and uh, I've got a whole, you know, counter, as you can see behind me, you know, at least two of those sections over there behind me are Linux manuals and Python manuals, C manuals, you know, how to computer science stuff. The rest of it's all the other things, business, philosophy, um, so, and health, a lot of stuff about health. And, uh, and that's what I do. I study human nature and civilization, and now I'm writing stories and making videos, you know, telling stories about human nature and civilization, you know free and open source software. So have a great day and uh, thanks for watching and peace be with you.